Okay, we're uh, sitting down here on a couple of beanie bags uh, with Lucas Pope uh, to learn more about your next game, Return of the Oberdins. For those who aren't familiar, what what is it all about? Okay, it's a first-person mystery game. It's set on an old uh, sailing ship. There's no pirates, but uh, it's kind of an old merchant sailing ship, and it uh, it goes out. It disappears, nobody knows what happened to it, but it drifts back in the port at some point a couple years later, and your job is to go out to the boat and figure out what happened. It's got a very particular sort of visual style to it, a very striking style. What, what is it that you're going for with, with the visuals? Yeah, it's uh, basically emulating kind of an old Macintosh Plus one-bit black and white style, which uh, the kind of games I, I played when I was a kid, and I thought uh, it looks really cool, those games look really cool, and I, I would love to try to do something more with that style. So that's more or less where it came from. Something about them that sort of adds to, I mean, you're going for the mystery vibe, of course, sort of adds to that because it sort of, it sort of feels like you're sort of, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it does certainly help the mood and sort of the atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's kind of one of the things I like about making games is to not fill in all the blanks. So to leave something up to the player's imagination, and this visual style uh, really helps with that. So they, they've got to sort of take what I give them, which is a limited palette, very limited palette, and kind of low-resolution graphics, and sort of fill in the rest in their mind. I mean, obviously a lot of people know you from, from Papers, Please, and, and your work with that game. This feels like it's a, a very different kind of game. Are there any sort of similarities in how you approach this, or, or do you want to do something that's new and fresh? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty different. Um, there are not that many similarities. I mean, the, the kind of uh, paper please was sort of the same in that I didn't. There was a lot of stuff left unsaid in that game, so there were a lot of ambiguities where I wanted the player to sort of use their imagination more. That's probably the only tie-in. I mean, everything else is totally different. First-person game. This is a mystery. It's like, yeah, pretty different. Na the narrative is a lot more uh, in your face and stronger in this game as well. So. I think I generally like to sort of experiment with different kinds of games. So Papers, Please was sort of one experimentation, and this one is, is a different one. And, and was it born similarly? Like cause Papers, Please was sort of a j jam that sort of turned into game, or? Yeah, not really. No, I, <clears throat> while working on Papers, Please, I kind of had this idea that I would like to make a game in that visual style. So I started with the idea that I want to make a one-bit 3D game, uh, and it kind of grew from there. You know? So. Uh, is there anything about the mystery that you can tell us, or is it like all that you're going to discover yourself as a player, or is there any, any themes that you're going with? Or Yeah, there's, there, I'm spoiling a little bit more in this demo than I did before. I had a demo a couple years ago that uh, I revealed a few things, but this one reveals a little bit more, and it is a pretty significant clue into how the story is going to go. Um, I don't want to say it on camera, but uh, th this demo will come out. I'll release this generally after GDC sometime, so people will be able to check it out for themselves. Are you, are you looking forward to having people play? Are you looking at people playing here and seeing how they either behave or? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, so I, the demo I released about a year and a half ago was more, more like a dev build. It wasn't really a demo. It was kind of a vertical slice with a lot of empty, uh, empty decks and missing pieces. I filled in those pieces, but content-wise, it's not much more than it was back then. At least not what I'm showing. I have more stuff behind the scenes, but I'm not showing it in a demo here. So I think um, th I need to explain myself why after a year and a half, it doesn't really look that much different than it did before. So not looking forward to that. <clears throat> and what's that explanation? I mean, obviously you've been working on it on other. Yeah, I, I'll actually, I'll, I'll try to um, make a big uh, dev blog post about this, about how um, a lot of the stuff I did for the early build didn't scale up to the whole game. So even though it looked like I was pretty far along, actually when I want to do that and, and stretch that over a whole game, it doesn't, it doesn't scale. So a lot of work was made, uh, um, spent uh, sort of redesigning the tools or figuring out exactly what I needed to do the whole game. Um, and that took a lot of time. Yeah. That's the thing you always hear from, from developers about making a demo is not just taking a little piece of a game and, yeah. and releasing it. It's, it's, a lot of it is sort of things that you have to do twice. Yeah, and I mean, you don't even know that until <clears throat> you try to use these tools that you created for the, the d small demo. You try to use them to make a full game, and you, you find you're running all these problems. So you have to like sort of redesign things. You know. So in, in the sort of the grander scale and the sort of uh, w where do you feel you are at in development now with the title and, and sort of what's left to do? Yeah, I, it's hard for me to say exactly because I don't have enough of the game to say to, to finish it and it'll be good. So there, there's still a point where I may change some of the design or, or change what I've got. Um, but I feel like I can finish it this year. I guess is the most I can say about the schedule. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. <clears throat>